Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 20 about creating a game in HTML5. So in this episode, what we'll be doing is improving the enemy AI. So they try to follow and chase the player and they shoot um, towards them. So that's what we will be doing. If you haven't watched the last episode, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So let's get started. Okay, so before actually working on the enemy AI, there are a bunch of changes I want to do with the entity um, module or class or prototype, and it's removing the speed X and the speed Y properties. So back when we started the project, they kind of made sense because everything was moving in straight lines. But now with the player movement, enemy AI, um, it no longer makes sense to have them. So if we remove the speed X and the speed Y, then every function that used them needs to be um, gone too. So right there, the update position use speed X and speed Y. So this function can no longer um, stay that way. So I'm going to take that function and place it right there for the moment. So in a comment, we'll be using that very soon for the bullets. Okay, so now concerning the update position, we have two choices. We could either remove it completely. If we remove it right there, we also need to remove it right here. And in every um, class that actually requires position, uh, movement update position, we would actually um, add it to the list of things to do when you update. So that's one option. The other option to do is to leave it right there and simply have it do nothing. That's another option to do it. And the third option, which is the one I would recommend for bigger project, is to create another class called um, Moving Entity. So that's another solution. And the Moving Entity actually has a function called Update Position with a good, decent update position system. But for this video, what I will be doing is simply have a update position that does nothing. So it, it works for the upgrade list. So upgrade when you update the position needs to do nothing. And for the three other types of entities, so player and me and bullet, we will need to customly define what they do. So um, player it's already done. We are already overriding um, the position right there. For the enemy, we will need to define the AI for it. And then finally for the bullets, we will use a system very similar to the old system. So moving in straight line all the time. So what I will be doing for um, the next couple of minutes is just removing every speed X and speed Y that we had before. So if we search for the entity right here, we were using the speed X and the speed Y, so those must go. Then here's speed X, speed Y, speed X, speed Y. Okay, so let's just remove it everywhere. Okay, now for the bullet, we will actually use the old system that we add. So we will keep a speed X and a speed Y for the bullet. So, but only for the bullet. So there we go, speed X, speed Y. There we go. And we will be using the old function and yeah, so the self of the position equal that function. Um, I will keep that the bullet still bounds, but eventually we are going to change that as well. So we will keep the speed X, speed Y, but only, like I said, only bullets will have them. So we do not include them in the entity update. Now if we search again for speed X, there should be only speed X in the bullet module. There we go. Okay, randomly generate enemy, we can remove that. And there we go only for the bullets. Okay, so the final step is to remove that part which represent the um, speed X and speed Y of the player and let's just test if everything works. So as you can see, everything still works. Now let's actually work on the um, update position of the enemy because right now it's using the default one which is nothing. Um, so if we go here in the enemy module, we are going to create the update position. And what we are going to do is get the difference in X between the player and the himself. 
So between the player and the monster, there we go. It's going to be really simple. So if the difference is greater than zero, so this means the player X is greater than the, the monster X, what we are going to do is to increase the monster X by, let's say, three. So it's going to be real small. And otherwise, we're going to decrease it by three. And we are going to do the same thing for the Y. So let's just save and check how it looks. So there we go. The, the bats are actually trying to chase the player. And it actually works great. Now the only little problem left is that they always shoot to the right, so with the default um, angle. So let's actually work on that too. So in order to do that, we will um, create a new function that will be called um, update aim. And what that function will do is that we will get the difference in x and y between the um, bat and the player, and then we will set the aim angle equal to the map tan2. Um, we already did that, by the way, um, with the player right here. So we specify the difference in x and y, then it actually tells us the aim angle. So we'll use exactly the same strategy. But instead of using the mouse, we are going to use the difference between the the player and the monster. There we go, and let's... Okay, so one thing though is that this function is never being called right now. We actually need to update the, the update function of the, the enemy to include it. And if you remember correctly, the, um, the way to add something on top of what's already inside the update loop is via the supper. I'm not actually here, I think it's actor, yeah. So we do a supper update equal the old one, and then we overwrite it. We do do that. So do what was in the update before, and on top of that, call the update aim function. So let's just ch save and check how it looks. So there's a bat, they try to shoot toward the player. Everything seems to be working. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode. See ya.